from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon. I'm Sir Robert Worcester. Uh, over there, they think I talk funny. Uh, here, people are surprised to hear an American, um, an American accent. My brief this afternoon as the final speaker is to step back from the primary focus on this Magna Carta Muse and Mentor Symposium, broaden it to provide a window into the international perspective. Briefly, Magna Carta 800th commemoration in Britain, in the Commonwealth, and in the rest of the world. In Britain, originally when we were established in 2010, we had 27 aspirations, of which 25 have been already accomplished, including having the Queen to agree to be the patron of the Magna Carta Trust, of which I'm Vice President, and the 800th anniversary of the sealing of the Great Charter, Magna Carta. There are two that haven't been accomplished to date, we still have a hope for a national holiday on the 15th of June every year to replace the rather prosaic uh, described the Spring Bank holiday on the 30th of May. Now, why not, for heaven's sake? And wouldn't that raise the profile of the Magna Carta? Because you've got to have awareness before you can get depth of knowledge. And what we're really after is a depth of knowledge. I define uh, people's views at three levels, opinions, attitudes, and values. To me, to William, to others that I'm working with, I know the Magna Carta, the rule of law, human rights, are core values of our being. And you want to get down to that level with as many people as you can. And I agree with William, you start early. Uh, if that were uh, nominated and agreed to the 15th of June to have a national holiday, but David Cameron, the Prime Minister, says he's not yet convinced. There's an election on the 7th of May, so I'm hopeful that I can put some pressure on one way or the other to one person or the other who will be the Prime Minister before that. Britain, uh, BBC, is just a marvelous national treasure. Their opening salvo will be a four-part series on the chattering class's favorite radio station, BBC Radio 4, 40 minutes each morning at 9 to 9.40 by Melvin Bragg and straight up there on their website, ready for downloading, free and easy access to the world. Uh, it's going to start with the, the, the beginnings of the Battle of Bovine in 2012. I do that all the time, 1214, which the BBC described on its 800th anniversary, and I was in Bovine in France, near Lille, uh, as the most important battle in history that nobody's ever heard of. Hopefully, uh, people will begin to understand it when they see it there and described, working right straight through from the Monday to Thursday to the relevance of the 21st century. It will bring in Constitutional history, application, development of the rule of law, access to justice, human rights, beginning a schedule, I, I'm bilingual, schedule, uh, onslaught of programming on the BBC. They'll have television. There's a four-part series for an hour each. There are th two three-part series. There's several two-part series and a number of single-hour programs. It'll be on the Children's Channel. Uh, you may or may not have heard of Horrible Histories, but Horrible Histories will be at Runnymede in 1215 to give kids, again William, uh, to give kids a real belief and understanding that something important happened on that day, that we have a legacy today, and they will have a legacy in the future. Uh, the BBC Parliament Channel will be doing quite a lot with it, as will BBC America, BBC World, and the World Service. 
the tablet, the national papers are being very supportive. We've had a huge amount of coverage already. We've got Magna Carta trails that will be uh, up on uh, advertising in this country, in the United States, and in five other major tourist markets about how people can link together one, two, three, four days into a fortnight, a two-week period, if you get some people who are really nerdy like the, those of us here. I'm delighted that C-SPAN is here today, and C-SPAN will be uh, available for the use of the BBC, and I can hardly wait to tell the Director General of the BBC that this is available to them, to them. Uh, to use on their channels. It'll be the biggest exhibition the British Library's ever mounted, with early February seeing the first time in history when all four of the 1215 uh, exemplars of the Magna Carta that David uh, Rubenstein was talking about will be brought together, and the exhibition will include both the Declaration of Independence and the American Constitution. And the curator said to me about three years ago, if you can just get the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, to the British Library for our, our conference, our exhibition. We'll have people around this block queued up to see it because these things are so important to people. Other ex exhibitions will be held in castles and cathedrals throughout the British Isles and in scores of towns and villages. An organization of the Third Age, called the Third Age, with over 300,000 members, has plans for their British history panels to feature talk and educational outreach across the country. There are essay competitions and debates. A Parliamentary House of Commons committee has launched a consultation in, on happening right now, which will have a year-long debate on a new Magna Carta. And they'll argue whether or not Britain should abandon its pride of a written con uh, unwritten constitution and codify what's there and enshrine the rule of law and civil rights. There's music, at least two cantata, several rock and other pop music compositions, and a Magna Carta Calypso being composed in Trinidad, uh, and many concerts and performances scheduled and plays and pageants, and another th over 1,000 events in hundreds of towns and villages will culminate on the 15th of June on the lonely meadow called Runnymede with Her Majesty the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, Prince William, and others present to pay tribute to the event of the sealing, not signing, of Magna Carta 800 years before on that day and place that was seen as the overthrow of divine rule of bad King John. We won't quit there, but we begin winding down. Now, when the Queen came back, or the private secretary to Her Majesty came back from his meeting with the Queen at Balmoral. He said, yes, she will be the patron. Yes, she will be at Runnymede, health, health uh, con in consideration, and two or three other things. But he, she, he said, she told me specifically to tell you, don't forget the Commonwealth. And one of the things I'm most pleased with is an 11 country hookup in the Caribbean, 11 different countries had academic seminars simultaneously linked at the University of West Indies for me to give a keynote lecture last month in Trinidad at the UE base in Trinidad for a live telecast of the keynote. And then now, in Jan starting in January the 5th, they have a series of, of seminars in their country. And this amazing guy who's professor uh, down there, Hamid Ghani is his name, and he's got a PhD from London School of Economics, by the way, but he's a Trinidadian, and he is uh, organizing this thing, and is organizing it amazingly. So there's 11 countries of the Commonwealth taking it one swoop, but uh, we're getting into a number of other countries, not least Australia and Canada and India and Malaysia and other members of the Commonwealth. There are 54 of them. Uh, of course, the American Bar Association is not just working in this country, but they're developing a, like, a website, Icon of Liberty Under Law, showing the public representation of Magna Carta internationally. And they're doing a high school video project exhibition here. And uh, they've been displayed already. The Magna Cartas have been borrowed in Houston, in Boston, in Williams, 
uh, in uh, Virginia. I'll be going down to Virginia with, with Dick Howard uh, and uh, speaking in several different places. Uh, the Commonwealth Lawyers Association is developing and displaying a special Magna Carta exhibition. Uh, we're also going to be funding a multi-country uh, survey of the awareness and depth of knowledge, and that includes the United States, by the way. In addition, Magna Carta Canada is going to be bringing over one of Durham Cathedral's Magna Carta for a special exhibition in five Canadian cities. And Australia has the agreement of the Prime Minister already to give a talk on Magna Carta next year, and Magna Carta New Zealand are looking to promote things. We've got 11 countries signed up so far to be issuing stamps. We've got coins being issued in various countries. Not, however, in the United States, as some Philistine at uh, whoever prints stamps decided, oh, there won't be enough public demand for them on Magna Carta, for heaven's sake. Well, we're going to prove them wrong, hopefully. The website is www. Magna Carta 800th, TH, which is loaded. It's got the best ma uh, website that's ever been done on the Magna Carta. <clears throat> it's not just the history, it's the tourism trails, it's the uh, merchandise. People have commented about the badge that some of us are wearing. It's a few dollars on the, uh, of the merchandise. You take the Magna Carta 800th.com, you go to that website down in the lower right hand corner, shop, there you'll see it. You'll see the mugs, you'll see the, the umbrellas, you'll see all sorts of things. Uh, and books for kids. Again, speaking to William's, uh, William Hubbard's commentary, uh, books for six to eight year olds, sticker book for uh, four or fives to work with their parents on, a wall book that stretches out uh, uh, 2.9 meters that takes the timeline of the hundred stages from the beginnings of rules of law around the world to, 20, to 1215. Now to end, I'm going to repeat something I said this morning. For those of you who are, were at the academic symposium this morning, and I want to repeat it this afternoon because I think it's so important and I'm in winding up with this. There's one thing that's not on the program of this seminar, symposium, that I would like everyone to consider here at one end of Pennsylvania Avenue at Capitol Hill. We're thinking of that and the White House down at the bottom because you've got the two, two essential uh, elements of the American government here and one down there. And I'm at the podium today representing my two countries, Britain and America, who believe and act in the defense of liberty. I would argue that the threats we have today to our shared values really strengthen the special relationship with which bonds our two countries, my two countries, Britain and America. And President Obama does as well, as has every president in my lifetime, going back to Franklin D. Roosevelt. Obama observed in a speech to Parliament in 2011 the following, our system and justice, customs and values stemmed from our British forefathers. And he went on to say, our relationship is special because of the values and beliefs that have united our people throughout the ages. Centuries ago, when kings, emperors, and warlords reigned over much of the world, it was the English who first spelled out the rights and liberties of man in Magna Carta. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, very much, everyone. I have the privilege, I guess, of closing out the program, so I'll be very, very brief because it is now uh, 4.40 and the building closes in 20 minutes, and I want to make sure that for those of you who have not had an opportunity that you can run upstairs and actually see Magna Carta. 
Um, as you heard very, uh, many times uh, this afternoon, this program was held in conjunction with our exhibition upstairs, Magna Carta, Muse, and Mentor. And we designed this program, this symposium, uh, to encourage discussion of the links between the principles of Magna Carta and the political and legal issues in American society today. So we, with that in mind, we brought together scholars, historians, judicial and congressional leaders and contemporary thinkers um, to generate that discussion with these ideas and so that we can hopefully think about new ideas about the influence of the Great Charter. Now here at the Library of Congress, we worked very hard over the last several years to bring the Lincoln, King, uh, Lincoln Cathedral King John Magna Carta back to the library for display because we believe that Magna Carta's presence here can remind the American people um, and to uh, talk a little, address a little bit the previous panel about reaching out to that next generation, to remind the American people and that next generation of the deep historical roots of this country's legal system. And it's our hope that the story that this exhibition upstairs tells will make clear just how much our constitutional order and our understanding of political liberty owes to the memory of Magna Carta. So on behalf of the Library of Congress, I want to thank all of our speakers, panelists, moderators for their terrific remarks. Uh, I want to thank all of you for sticking it out with us this afternoon and staying here and hearing all of the wonderful um, comments that we had. Um, and just invite you to visit the Magna Carta exhibition before you leave. And I do want to have one commercial break, which is to let you know about a couple of the programs that we have in addition to our wonderful program today. We will continue the Law Library of, Concert, uh, Law, excuse me, Law Library of Congress Magna Carta Symposium. We have two more programs. Uh, the first one will be in January, on January 14th. We will have uh, Dr. Ruth Karras from the University of Minnesota who will uh, be here to speak on a program, Magna Carta, Women in, Medieval er excuse me, Women in Medieval Europe in 1215. And then on Tuesday, April 7th, we're very, very delighted that we will be able to host uh, Professor Nicholas Vincent, uh, who is the world-renowned scholar on Magna Carta. Uh, and he will be here, Magna Carta, New Discoveries. And so that's in April. So I hope I'll see you there. Uh, Thank you again for coming. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.